Yo guys, welcome to my Premier League prediction reaction video. We're going to have a look and see how well we predicted the Premier League nine or ten months ago now. So let's dive straight into the video With and the see who we have in number 20. We have got Sheffield United. Rock there we go. The uh, Premier League for me. Should we, should we just stop the video there? 100% record. Just finish it there. I think everyone's probably going to put Sheffield United. I don't think any... It'd be more interesting to see if anyone's actually predicted Sheffield United not to finish in the relegation zone after losing like their best players and whatnot. I just don't see a way that they're going to stay up. It's... I would like it, but I just don't think they've signed enough and they've lost arguably their best player to Marseille uh, in Dai. Obviously, scored all their goals last season pretty much. So I don't, I don't quite see... The plan there uh, for Sheffield United, obviously, it's a great amount of money getting promoted and coming back down, but I just don't see them having enough to stay up in the league. Then we've got Nottingham Forest. Well, I mean, I'm not a million miles away with Nottingham Forest, to be fair. You know, only two or three spaces out. In my head, I don't know. I just felt like the wheels were going to come off, and they kind of did to some extent. Obviously, Nuno just grind. I to be honest, this is the lowest amount a team has ever stayed up in the Premier League. That in its own tells you how bad the three in the bottom have done. To not even get 30 points, the teams in the bottom. And Forrest had a points deduction as well, so they should have technically had 36. But obviously that is a factor. Um, but still, to stay up on 36 would have been, I think, one of the lowest amounts. Usually you need your special 40 to stay in the Premier League. So, I don't know. I just felt like they've not done well, but they've just done slightly better than the three worst teams basically that's that's what Forrest have done who miraculously stayed up last season I don't see them pulling off any miracles this time and they'll probably get relegate, relegated obviously no kilo on Navas Lingard's gone which is a lot of free wages there so they could bring in another really, really miss Lingard. 30 or 40 players um, to invest in the, to the team of course so I don't know they kind of got lucky Steve Cooper is the only reason they stayed up is because he's a good manager be interested to see where he goes, actually. I don't know if like Norwich or uh, even Hull looking at him, maybe. Um, the players that they have aren't that great, and they got very lucky last year. Crystal Palace next. Well, to be fair, before Glasner, things weren't looking great. They probably would have stayed up anyway, because how bad these three were. But that is probably going to be one of my biggest out of position eight 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 difference i don't think we're going to get a bigger eight difference but they did have an incredible end to the season and i think i'm really excited to see like beating villa i know villa played quite a weak team to be fair but some of these results like the man united game they absolutely cooked man united obviously they have the injuries and whatnot but like this team that palace is starting to put together the wharton and then this front three this is like for this is like messi uh, Neymar and Suarez level front three quality at the minute. Like Mateta scored 13 and 13, something like that. Obviously, if they can keep Elise and Eze and Mateta in the summer and build on this team, you know, get a couple of defense, like obviously Klein's probably passed it now. Um, yeah, I, th I think this Palace key team could very easily eclipse some of the teams around them. I think they could easily, like look at it here, like after that result, they were 14th. So they've only just gone into 10th pretty much in the last... Uh, last week of the league so you know fair play to crystal palace they've, they've absolutely smashed the end of the season with glasner and uh, the future is looking very bright um they've lost zaha potentially losing elise kept to least say that's the difference bringing in anything that good so yeah i think i think they've done well to be in this like mid-table kind of premier league for the last few seasons but i just don't see them extending their time any longer than uh, this season then just above the relegation zone, the team that could be very Ooh, easily in there is uh, Wolverhampton. Mm. It's not the worst shot because they did like sack. I don't know if Lopetegui would have been manager at this point or not. I don't know if they were like kind of looking a bit shaky, but Gary O'Neill's done a great job. Obviously, the second half of the season, not so much. Um, obviously, the, the distance and some of the varicals that Wolves have had throughout the season. <clears throat> I think with some more favourable VAR decisions, you could easily see them at least 10th, possibly 9th. And, he, you know, I think 9th is a realistic position for Wolves. So, I don't know. Obviously, I'm only I'm only technically three out on my predictions, so I can't really complain um, on where they finish. So, Wanderers. I'll kind of take it. I'm amazed because I remember Wolves came up originally with this great plan. I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of their centre-backs anyway. Um, and then they've also lost the Dharma Traore, 
on a free. Don't want to let Fulham towards the end of the season. They start investing some money, which I expect them to do over the next few weeks. Um, it's going to be a very interesting season for Wolverhampton Wanderers, and I could very easily see them in the relegation zone. Then we've got Luton Town. I think it. This was more hope than anything, to be honest. I was just hoping that first season in the Premier League they would actually just keep up, but unfortunately, it's nice for Luton to stay up. So I put them in didn't. about uh, 16th. I think they'll just about scrape it. They'll just about have the fight needed. Obviously, no Camber. They've gotten a permanent. That's good to see. And uh, I'm sure they'll bring it's in a, marvelous a number of faces just to keep the spirit alive. I think that's that's the thing about Luton. They've got that spirit of coming through the playoffs. And uh, that'll just push them over the line to uh, stay in the league. Then we've got Burnley. Weirdly, I thought I had Burnley in the relegation zone. Because I knew going into this Premier League season, if they continue to play the way they did in the Championship, that they would do this and concede so many goals that, you know, they did score. I don't know. They did. But like Luton were technically better in the, like, yeah. Um, yeah. Burnley really, I, I don't know. Would there have ever been a point where you sat company and give someone else the job? They might have got those like, because essentially all they needed was, Nine points, right? Is that right? Is my mass off? Yeah, nine points gets them onto 33. You know, would a different manager have had that click? Same with Luton again. I think another manager potentially, obviously Rob Edwards did a ridiculous job to get Luton in the Premier League anyway, so I think he deserves to stay with the club. But uh, yeah, Burnley I've got a bit Making high. some good signs. Again, a team that could, like any of these three here, could very easily switch with the relegation three. Um, Burnley... It's going to be interesting to see how they adapt with the style of play. I know Bournemouth came up a few years back with Eddie Howe, played really good football, and that might be the kind of similar situation. Then we've got Fulham. Fulham, have... Fulham in 14. Eh, one off. That's pretty good. I've, I've absolutely smashed that, in my opinion. I don't, I don't think I can get much closer than that. Obviously, Sheffield United at the bottom. But yeah, Fulham, for me, it's just very tricky to break into that top 10, but I was like that, that 14th to 10th kind of range for Fulham brought in him oh Wolves have also lost Jimenez haven't they to Fulham so there's another player so yeah Fulham might be losing Marco Silva Willian and Mitrovic to the Saudi League over the next few weeks the and other thing did. is the Saudi League stays open I think three weeks after the Premier League transfer window so these players could go after the window and then these clubs can't replace anyone so that's going to be interesting to see of course but yeah Fulham they did really well last season a lot better than a lot of people thought but i think this next season they are going to just about get maybe about 14th 15th whether marco silva and mitrovic is still there when the season starts we'll have to see then we've got bournemouth i think bournemouth they've kind of we done well there again we've done well there again you know 12th 13th pretty good you know I wonder what i say about bournemouth because i think at this point was gary o'neill I, I, I you've a got a plan which i kind of like they controversially sacked Gary O'Neill. Yeah, so he was gone at this more. point. I think this was after like the first week of the Premier League I made this prediction. Um, so yeah, it seems the plan has worked really well with Iriola. And I'm actually, again, like Bournemouth and Palace, they're actually quite interesting clubs at the minute. Obviously, Brighton going to look at a new manager as well. Um, but they've gone with, oh, he's a Spanish manager. I can't remember his name, but he's, he, he seems relatively competent. I can't remember his name. And they seem to be investing well. They brought in Justin Clivert. They brought in, he's, cr he's trying to remember all these players that have, everyone's moved to. But yeah, I, th I think Bournemouth are looking at that bottom half of mid-table kind of finish. They might get in the relegation zone, but I think they've just got a bit more than Forest Palace and Sheffield United, basically. Then into the uh, top 12, we go with uh, Everton. I think... To be fair, how many points deductions did Everton have this season? Was it eight in the end? I'm trying to think how many points Everton actually got from... Because uh... if, if that is the case, basically, then Everton move, obviously. Um... Everton were ducked duck to ten, and then I think given back four, but then taken off two. I want to say about six, yeah six or whatever so they they probably would have been where i predicted them but you know sean Dyche's first full season he'll get some good players in that he wants to fit his style of play i think they'll get a strike hopefully what happens with calvert lewin is an interesting one because obviously 
he's a good player but he's just far too injury you know prone he's just always plays about three games then gets injured for a couple of months so a lot of interest to see what uh, Sean Dyche does obviously got Dan Juma who they wanted about six months before Tottenham stolen basically off him um so yeah I think first season with Dyche they should do a lot better and hopefully avoid a uh, relegation fight then we've got West Ham they haven't actually sp again 11th 9th it's about the right area isn't signed it signed a single player yet but they have got about 100 and well, it's technically like 122 million because they're going to lose Skamaka to Inter obviously that two two place difference is uh Mohamed Kudush and who else did West Ham sign in the end this might not happen towards the end of the that's window what the rumor is at the minute Rice has obviously gone for about 100 mil so you'd expect them at least spend 78 Ward Prowse wasn't it Ward Prowse and Kudus, who yeah, million. makes minimum, up two places. Be, yeah, because they won the Conference League. So that'll be something nice for him. Get Europa League. Then we've got Tottenham Hotspur. What's he done here? To be fair, I I remember what I said about Ange, and I regret it massively, because he's done a brilliant job, Ange. I think you're losing Harry Kane. I think a lot of people said this. Tottenham would finish in this, like, outside of the top six. And the fact that they have finished in the top six, only two points off Champions League. And with that run at the end there, they could have easily got those points. You know, I think Ange's done a brilliant job, to be honest. I think he's really um, galvanised the club. I think it's got a direction now with him. He's got he's got those standards at the club. And, and I'm really excited to see what they do in the summer. Obviously, they should back him. Daniel Levy should give him money with the 100 million they got from Kane like obviously they did spend a bit last year but not not that much really when you think about it on the net spend um so let's see what I said who it all does depend on Harry Kane staying at the club if Kane stays at the club pop him up to like six or seventh but in my head I you see that's see with Kane, Kane six or seventh with Kane and they've gone fifth that's how well they've at done Tottenham at the start of the season I just think Bayern Munich are putting too much pressure on. I think a number of like PSG are looking at him as well. I just, I just don't see how Kane stays at the club. And then how do you replace Harry Kane in whatever two three weeks basically left of the window? That's that's going to be the challenge for Spurs. I think as a long term project, it's a nice one with uh, Postecoglou, whatever his name is, the uh, Postecoglou, the Aussie, but Postecoglou. Um, Come on, mate. Yeah, Post it's not the greatest of times to be a Tottenham fan. Who is this but... idiot? You never know. These next few weeks, the transfer window might get better. Then we got Brentford. And it did actually get quite better for Tottenham because what did they do at the end with bits and bobs? Obviously, Brentford have not done well with. Uh, but I kind of trusted in Thomas Frank. And I think this was before Ivan Tony got his ban. So if you throw Ivan Tony's whatever hypothetical 15, 20 Premier League goals, maybe you do have Brentford a lot higher in the t You probably do have Brentford a lot higher in the table because you had 20 goals to that. That puts them on 75. Well, we'll say we'll say 70 to be fair. You know, you're looking at numbers like more than West Ham and, you know, I think I think with Ivan Tony, Brentford have a much better season. But obviously that big ban for him cost him there. Let me just have a look what Spurs did sign. Um after Harry Kane did leave, and then we can really assess what what Andrew's got for next season, because that'll be quite interesting as well. Obviously, I think Brandon Johnson, was he a late one? Or was he in a... I think he was a late one. Obviously, they got Madison, uh, Mickey van der Ven, very good signing. Vicario, very underrated. He's had a brilliant season, you know. So I think Andrew's done a brilliant job, and I, I do feel sorry for putting Tottenham at 10th. They're doing great stuff with Thomas Frank. You know, they were going in the right direction. Ivan Tony. Should be back from his ban, I think. Um, and then obviously they've brought him. When, when, when? So sorry, he only just had his ban. I can't remember. Ivan Tony came back in like January. So Kilman I can't remember. from Wolves. I don't know. And I'm sure they'll probably bring what in a Kilman, eh? What a Kilman. A couple of really good Danish players that we've never heard of, but you know, somehow make Brentford great. And uh, yeah, good mid table finish for them. Why not? Then in the final uh, of the mid-table teams, we've got Brighton. Obviously, they've lost. Brighton, yeah. They had a bit of a fall-off at the end of the season once De Serbi had a bit of a strop, and obviously Brighton were kind of sticking to their plan, which they should do um, with signings and whatnot. I think it's an interesting one who Brighton get next. But yeah, I think, I think they probably should have finished eighth. 
easily to be fair um but the fall off at the end of the season like you know start of the season for brentford they had some i think it was a hat trick for i evan ferguson yeah i'm sure evan ferguson scored a hat trick in the first half of the season and then he's only scored three goals since so you know i think a little bit disappointed obviously Jao pedro's had a brilliant season um so you really can't complain at that and i'm i'm, I'm genuinely excited to see who brighton bring in because i think i think they like so many of these t- t- teams here in palace brighton and bournemouth have the potential to really push these teams above and you know i, d- I don't i don't know how you, you're going to break into it but they somehow will like aston villa have this season Os McAllister and robert sanchez i think today to chelsea um, they've also lost. Who else have Brighton lost? Casado's fifty-fifty at the minute with Chelsea. He's gone. So that might be another one. So yeah, I think Brighton are a good team. Like they're, they're doing really well with what they have. The Hood was very disappointed. Converting a lot of money, which is great to see. So I'm sure they'll do well next year. Then in the uh, first Europa League spot, it's a bit interesting. I think I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure there's five Champions League spots, and then two conference like Europa League or something. I'm not too sure how it works next season, but uh, apparently it's different. Next up in seventh, then we do have Aston Villa. Again, I think most people probably have Villa about seventh. Um, and then Villa. Yeah, a Villa, Unai you know, Emery's done a terrific job when you really break down the squad that he kind of has. Like Ollie Watkins has had a terrific season. You know, you've got some great goals from Leon Bailey. He started to cook um, when first signs the club wasn't looking too good. Obviously, uh, Musa Diaby coming in with goals. And, you know, it's, it's a very, there's, it's nice because if Ollie Watkins doesn't score, you've got your Bailey, Louise and Diaby and McGinn who can get your goals. Um, you know, there's not really like some clubs, like like your Brentfords where they're relying quite heavily on an Ivan Tony. The, the goals are quite nicely spread. Obviously, you still got your Ivan Tony, but you've got people behind him as well at Villa. And that's that's why they've had this brilliant season and uh, maybe should have done better in the conference league, to be honest. Losing to Olympiacos 6-2 is a little bit disappointing. Probably had the best, in terms of the quality of the players that they've brought in, the best transfer window out of any team in the Premier League. The three signs they've made is Tielemans on a free, which is ridiculous. You know, he's linked to like Spurs and... Um, even like Arsenal and stuff like that previously, so to get him is great. They got Diaby, who's a fantastic winger from Bayer Leverkusen, and they got uh, Paul Torres from uh, Villarreal, who's another great player. So I don't see them going backwards. So the only way they can go is forwards, and with Uno Emery, good evening. Seem to be doing really well there at the minute. Um, you know, they could very easily push into fifth or maybe even sixth position. So, oh, why don't you just say fourth at... there? Why don't I just say, oh, fifth or fourth? One of these top six sides uh, dropping out, which is going to be very interesting. Obviously, we had Chelsea with the off year last year. Um, but next up in sixth position, you see, it's kind of difficult because when you when you put it into this kind of like, this is where they want to be. I'm going to go... For... I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to annoy one set of fans either way i'm gonna go arsenal next i didn't realize i, didn't realize I did that i don't remember doing that i really don't remember doing that i thought i had man united newcastle chelsea coming next and it was gonna look quite decent what are you doing there luke to be fair they didn't sign a strike i'll, I'll see what i said and then i'll what I think last season was the chance for Arsenal to get into that title, basically, and they missed it. I don't see them being able to do what they did last year, and I don't see them getting better. They've brought in good players in Timber and Rice, which will help. But I just think the teams around them are better. You know, I just think Casemiro is better than Rice. What am I doing? And, you know... Can we, can we switch that around? It's very difficult, I, I, I will be honest. I'll be very interested to see where people put Arsenal, but I just don't see them really finishing any higher than fourth this season, so I had to put them in sixth. Um, next okay. up, we've got Man United, again. I mean, they'd be disappointing, haven't they? Let's be honest. I think most people put Man United in this, like, sixth to third bracket when they were predicting at the start of the season. So, I'll take fifth. Both of these are very controversial, but I think 
they've not really improved. Basically, they've got Onana for De Gea, who's debatably a worse keeper. Obviously, Onana's a bit more better with his feet, but as a goalkeeper, I'd say De Gea's probably better in terms of saving shots and keeping clean sheets. Um... And then Mount's kind of a nicety. It's, you know, it's nice squat depth and everything, but I don't think they needed Mason Mount, really. And Hoy Hoyland is nine goals last year in Syria. You know? I think if he gets ten goals for Man United this season in the league, then great. He did that. He did that, guys. He got ten goals. There, there you go. There's the big brain. I think, that's uh, for me, I think Hoyland has done really well, considering the lack of service and everything. Um, you know... And obviously, defensively, Man United have been shocking. Obviously, the injuries have been a factor for Man United. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, without European football next season, unless they win the FA Cup, I'm pretty sure. Develop, but I don't see this season as being like, you know, like Haaland was last year for Man City, where he just came in and scored 35 goals. I don't see that happening with uh, Hoy Hoyland. I think it's Hoyland anyway. You know, the Danish one. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's confirmed by now. The but Danish I don't one. see... I, I just haven't seen improvement in that Man United team, basically. So I don't see why... Who is this idiot? ...they would get any higher. And if anything, the teams around them have got better. Then in fourth position, we've got Chelsea. I mean, to be fair, my thought process on this, I think, was that Chelsea I did end the season quite well under Pochettino. But I just thought, with the sheer amount of money they spent... I don't know... I just, I just felt without the European football, they would have a little bit of a better season. And they, they, in, in fairness, I think Pochettino's done as well as he probably could. I don't think any manager could have done a better season, to be fair, with the considerations that were under there. I think with Pochettino and the players that they've brought in, and Kunku, obviously, per, uh, Enzo Fernandez in his very first like full season. Um, they brought in Robert Sanchez from Brighton. The defence is quality. You know, if Chilwell can stay fit and then Reese James, Thiago Silva and Badashiel or... Um, oh, who's the other one? The problem is Chelsea got so many players. Like, it's trying to remember what their team is, but it's just so good at the same time. That's that's the great thing. Obviously, Raheem Sterling as well should do a lot better with Pochettino. So, yeah, I just I, I don't see how Chelsea don't finish in the top four with the quality that they have. Jackson seems to be doing well as well up front. So... On, onwards and upwards for Chelsea, in my opinion. Uh, in third place, gone for Newcastle. To be fair to Newcastle United, if... Now, some people might be putting Newcastle in that fifth, sixth. They might think this second season they won't get better, but they've brought Sandra... To be fair, this was before Sandra Tonali got his ban. So there's probably three or six points just by him. And then the sheer number of injuries for Newcastle... I think you could easily put him into fourth, realistically, if it wasn't for the factors involved with Newcastle. Obviously, they have finished seventh, and it's going to be disappointing if they don't get European football. If um, if Man United win the FA Cup, Newcastle don't get European. If Man City win it, then Newcastle do. So, hopefully, for Newcastle fans anyway, Tenali, City want to win. Harvey Barnes. And now I'll be Barnes. Oh, it's an equaliser. Is basically a replacement for Saint Maximin, who obviously Harvey Barnes outperformed in terms of stats, like he got more goals and assists. So um I don't see how that's you know, they're going forwards basically, and they're getting Liveramento from uh Southampton to play probably either a back or right back or left uh, left back. So if they can get like a really good I know they've got Isaac at the minute and Wilson. I think they just need that one extra striker, which with the Saudi money, I don't see. To be fair, again, Isaac, um, you know, in the, the games that he played, I think it was only 20, he scored 25 goals. I want to say it's in, because a lot of the, I think there's about 10 substitutions there. So it's about 30 starts to something like that anyway. Um, yeah, I just think injuries have cost Newcastle at the end of the day, and obviously the Sandra Tonali ban costing them that midfielder so you know i think i think considering everything newcastle have done see why they can't do in the next well. few weeks if they get a really good attacker then you know very easily get into that top uh four position then we've got liverpool yeah. anyone out 
in second place. I think they're going to do a lot better this season with an actual midfield. Obviously, they've lost, I think, five midfielders, if I'm not mistaken. Milner, Henderson, Fabinho, um, Keita, and there's one more. can't remember. Um, but yeah, McAllister and uh, Slazaboy. Slazaboy. Great signings. They seem to be doing really well in pre-season. Thiago will get a bit more freedom in that midfield. Hopefully, they get in a replacement for Fabinho in a number six. I think they're looking at Lavia. You know, maybe they would have finished second if they got Lavia and he didn't go to Chelsea. Um, so yeah, I don't, you know, Liverpool, they had a tricky last season. But I think with Darwin Nunes in his first full season in the Premier League, I don't see why he can't push on as well. So yeah, I've put them in second. You can argue with me in the comments. I think this top six is pretty concrete in my Concrete? He said concrete. Why did he say concrete? Ahead. And obviously the champions are Man City. It's... If anyone doesn't put Man City in the top position, it's it's a little bit silly, really. Because <laughs> it's just scary how good their team is. And um... and there you go, guys. At the end of the day, we got first and we got 20th bang on. So we got both ends of the table smack bang 100%. I don't think there's anyone in the middle. You know, with early got right there. I just don't Let see me, a little bit uh... of debate. Anyone else that we got right? Let me just put them side by side and then I can just easily... Have a look. So we got City, right? Liverpool won out. Arsenal have done very well considering they didn't really have a striker this season. <clears throat> and obviously, Kai Havertz has done a lot better than I thought he would have done, to be honest. And I think fair play to Arsenal. They really did do as best as they possibly could. And, you know, it's just kind of impossible to beat this City team at the minute while Pep Guardiola is there. Obviously, he's looking at maybe leaving not next season, but the season after. So maybe that's that's the chance for somebody else to win the Premier League for once. Um, yeah, Tottenham wasn't a great shout. They, they were five out. Brentford weren't a good shout. They were miles out. Same with Palace as well. But they only climbed recently in the last few weeks. Um, yeah, the Wolves, Fulham's and Bournemouth's and Everton's, they're kind of pretty good. Um it's not the worst. I think there's worse people, you know, at the end of the day, I got two 100% correctly. I don't think there's anyone else I've got bang on. Um, I mean, we've got one off with Bournemouth and one off with Fulham. So I did I did do quite well with them. Um, but yeah, all in all, let, let me know how you guys think I did. I think, to be fair, I don't think anyone saw John philippe Mateta. I think if you look at Mateta's stats before Glasner and after Glasner, it's literally like, I don't know, it's like a light bulb's been switched on. He's got like 13 and 13 under Glasner. Before that, I think he had 30 goals in about 100 games. It might be less than that, to be honest. It might be like 25 in 100 games, something like that anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap up this video here because, uh, well, it's it's finished now. We've, we've seen with prediction. Um, I probably will do a Premier League prediction for next season once we know who's been promoted we don't know if Leeds or Southampton are gonna join this lovely league but we'll probably put them smack bam bo bottom of the league um especially if it's Leeds they'll go right right at the bottom with Nottingham Forest as well um but yeah I think all in all obviously the points deductions have been a factor this season you know Everton would have been much higher if they didn't get their points deductions but yeah let me know how you think I did in the comment section down below drop a like if you did enjoy today's video and we'll catch you all next time